Good morning. I'm glad to be able to come before you this morning because God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I thank God for this great day, this blessed day that we serve a great God. And I thank God for that because God is worthy of all the praise and the honor. Let's open up in prayer. Father God, as I come before you and this great people, as I humble myself to you, that your will be done, not just today, but every day, every second, every moment that we give you the praise and the honor. As I humble myself before you and before this people, the Lord speak through me as I have taken time out to pray, to study your word. But even in that, if you, if the Holy Spirit doesn't lead and I don't follow, then it's for naught. But the Holy Spirit leads and I will follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I always like to say this. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a great day to be alive. And I thank God for it. It is a good day if it was night, if it was noon day, in the evening. It is a great day to be alive. I remember as a kid, and I, you all know I'm country, from North Carolina, and I remember we used to play King of the Hill. And sometimes we would be on a little mound of dirt, and you would be that king. And all your friends, your siblings would try to take you off of your hill. And that's your foundation. Because on the hill, you can kind of see out and you can kind of scope your enemy coming. Now, we were kids, we were playing. Then we had to stand our ground. You know, the law in Florida and all around said, stand your ground. You can protect your property and oneself. So we were the king of the hills. We had to stand our ground so our siblings wouldn't, our friends, siblings wouldn't take us off our mountain. We had to be on a strong foundation, dig our heels in, because you didn't want to lose your heel. You, you wanted to stand your ground. Now, this was just kids' play. But let me tell you right now, this is not kids' play. This is not kids' play. Satan is not playing with us. He's out to kill us. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy but Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So I, all of us need to stand our ground. You all know my story of this year going through the cancer treatment, radiation and all that, operation and all that. But you know what? God is good. And I would like to report that on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I had three more days of radiation. And Wednesday, approximately when I go in there at 10.50, by 12 o'clock, I'm finished. So when I walk out on Wednesday around 12, I will be finished. A little after 12, I'll be finished. And I thank God for that, even though I may have to take a shot every six months for the next year or so. But I'm alive. But I don't have to have any more a radiation treatment. The doctor said I'm doing good. Now, I talked on last week, the title was, Is Your Foundation Secured? And the subtitle is, One Must Be Anchored In For The Long Haul. And this has been a long haul for me, long haul for you going through what you're going through, long haul for all of us, many of us. And so I had to hang in there, stay in there, stay rooted and grounded for the long haul. So what I wanted to do is to continue on about the foundation. And again, the title is, Is Your Foundation Secured? Part 2. The subtitle is, and listen to the subtitle, The Results of the Stress Test. The Results of the Stress Test. Stress is good, stress is bad, depends on how we look at it. And I looked up some information. I've been, a, been around a construction and everything for a while. And 
I understand some of the concepts. So I looked up some information and it said how to spark foundation issues around the house. Guess what? Our bodies are temples. This is the house of God, not the physical church where COVID kind of slid that back or cut that back some. But we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost. So I looked up this information about watching about uh, your foundation. And I'm going to hit a couple of those, but I will hold off. Here's the first point A. Are you ready for the stress test? Now, it's going to come. It's how we handle it. B, the stress test will determine the stability of one's foundation. C, no one can take this test for you. <laughs> your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, no one can take this test for you. Now, in school... Unfortunately, many have cheated my day, today, and tomorrow and taken a test with someone else and copied someone's information. And I remember in school, uh, there were times that students were so bad at it, they copied the person's name that they were cheating off from next to uh, that person. That's bad. And D, is God pleased with the results of the test? Is God pleased with the results of the stress test? Okay, let, I, I've said that. Now let me get to about the foundation issues around the house. It said test the doors and windows. Sometimes a stubborn window simply calls for a little WD-40. You know, you want to make sure it's good, it's cool, going up and down. You want to make sure that window is sealed, especially this time of year. You want to look for sagging floors of, or ceilings. See, this is the foundation of this house because you start seeing sagging this, something's going to come down. Investigate those musty smells in the basement because it could be mold, and mold, if you're not careful, can really cause some. Uh, health issue, your breathing. Okay, so the, what the person, what the person is doing here is checking all of those things. Of course, it said check mo the mold, uh, the mustiness, check the gap between the windows and the walls, examine any bold walls, uh, pay attention to your chimney. Because they had said, I, I guess it's true, if the chimney falls during a house burn, you if something was going on. Because I remember back in 73 when our house caught on fire, the house burnt down, but the chimney stood. So the chimney was really on a good foundation. It said, look for nails popping out of the drywall. Many of us got some nails popping out of our drywall, I'm telling you. Diagnose any cracks in the wall or the floor. Sometimes there are cracks in our spiritual foundation and we need to make sure that we check on those things and call in a professional. We need to call in Jesus. We need to call in our spiritual leaders. We need to call in our prayer partners to help us through. So now, let me go ahead on with this because... I'm very concerned that many of our foundations under stress, they have been compromised. It's not how long you've been, been saved, it's what are you doing right now? Are you rooted, are we rooted and grounded in the word of God? Are we holding on to God's unchanging hand? Now it's easy to sing the song. Ain't nobody going to turn me around. I'm going all the way. Uh, you can't stop me from praising the Lord. But what happens when distress comes upon you? Just like that building, just like you see these long expanded bridges, they have supporting rods. They, they, as I said on last week, they dig down into the bedrock. 
Uh, like I said before, I love to look at documentaries and even the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. That bridge and other bridges like it are actually, you're riding in a tube. They actually put these tubes and sink it, put it in bedrock, support it, ground it, and they keep connecting the tubes. Of course, the tubes have two closed ends, then they'll pop out one end and stick it to the other and weld it together. I don't know all the intricate details, but you're actually riding in a big, I don't know, they were 80 feet long by 40 or something like that wide, uh, I don't know for sure. But you're actually driving the tube, but the foundation had to be secured. Then not only that, they had to put certain stress tests on buildings, foundation, bridges, tunnels. It has to pass the stress test. If it doesn't pass the stress test, then the owner, whether it's the state or the individual, whatever, whatever, won't accept it, and then you won't get paid for the work or for the total work you've done. You won't get paid for all of it. So it has to pass the stress test. Are we passing the stress test? Are we pleasing to God? Is God pleased with our efforts? Turn to Galatians, the fifth chapter, Verses 22 through 23. And these are some of the instruments. It's, uh, the point is, instruments used in testing our building foundation. See, we are the buildings. And it's love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Let me actually turn to it. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Okay, uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22 through 23. And just prior to that, let, let me back up. Turn to Galatians, the fifth chapter, and, and the 19th verse. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, Hatred, various emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, they that which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, if you let these things Getting your foundation, you will not be established. Let me count how many of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then and such like me, there are more. About, about 18 of these things are named. 17 and such like, so there are many other things. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. I guess such there is no law. I, I got to uh, tell a little story. Being an old country boy, even though I've been here many years, it's still country in me. And back home in the country, you're used to throwing things, throwing bags of fertilizer, throwing watermelon and big sweet potatoes. So for some reason, throwing hadn't got out of my system. And Pastor Jay, Janice, my wife, said, Google it, please be gentle. And I'm thinking I'm gentle because I was kind of throw stuff down, and I'm thinking I'm being gentle. Our four grandchildren and the youngest, Austin, and they call, we call him Little Ghoulie because he's so much like me. Now I look, he throws stuff. But she thinks he's being gentle. And I said, oh my goodness. And my sister Ann tells me, she's in North Carolina, I said, she would say, Ghoulie, that's what you did. He's taken after you. And I'm like, oh my goodness. But we have to be gentle. So in other words, the instruments used in testing our building foundation 
are these fruit of the spirit. Have you passed the love test? Well, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know how they treated me. Have you uh, passed the joy test? When everything is going down but the word of God. When you get a bad medical report, is the joy still there? See, we can praise God when things are going good. We can praise God, say, yes, God, I thank you, I thank you. Uh, I remember that morning in February, I said it last week, I walked my, walked my wife out to the door early that morning about 5.30, and uh, I came back in the house, and I just tore up the carpet. I was just praising God that after almost 12 years, my body feeling better, I, I don't have to use a cane, I, I was feeling good. That was about 5.30 that morning. At a, about 11 o'clock, the doctor said, you've been diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer. Now, I had a choice to make. And I can still exhibit that same joy that I had earlier that morning, four or five hours earlier. See, my foundation is not circumstantial. My foundation is rooted in the uh, word of God and in the, and and in the love of God. So I had to pass the joy test. Then I had to pass the peace test. I'm at peace, God, whatever your will is. And I must admit, there was a moment some fears knocked on the door. And like, you're going to die. So I decided to tell Satan, guess what? You are right. I am going to die. One day, when God is ready. But I don't believe I'm going to die from this cancer. So I agreed and disagreed with him. Yes, I'm going to die. I didn't come here to live forever. Did I? Then I had to pass the long, all of us, but I had to pass the long suffering stage of pain and agony. Then I talked about the gentleness of pain and disappointment and all these things can cause anger to come up in us. And we can, uh, we call it in the country, lash out at somebody else which they had nothing to do with it, but because you're in pain and agony, we can take it out on somebody else. So we have to pass the gentle test, the goodness test. We have to pass the faith test. See, these are the building blocks of the foundation of our temple. So the next time that you got me, um, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against there such as no law. So the next time something comes up contrary, just say it's only a test. Stay put or stay tuned to your station. Don't go postal. Don't go berserk. Okay? Don't do that. Just stay tuned because God would allow certain things to happen for us to see where we are. We can say easily what we're going to do, but we have to make sure that we do what we say we're going to do in the Lord. So the instruments used in testing our building foundation, the fruit of the Spirit is that part of that foundation. Matthew, Matthew the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. Matthew 11. 28 through 30. And come unto me, this is what Jesus is saying, all you that labor that have it laden, and I will give you rest. Now, rest is a, it's, it's, it's a part of the fruit of, it's not a part of fruit of the Spirit, but you can add that into part of it. In a sense, it is, because Love is also peace. The love of God, we have the peace of God. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What I'm trying to say is, we need to rest. 
If you can, wherever you are across this land, stand. If you can stand. If you're not able to stand, just sit. If you lie in the bed of your affliction, just lie there. Lift your hands, but breathe. Just breathe. That's breathing the air. If you're on an oxygen, oxygen tank or a ventilator, just breathe. If you're, you're outside walking and listening and watching, just breathe. We have to learn how to rest. Learn how to rest. I have told my testimony, and many of you all know, how as a young child I had emotional, we call it nervous breakdown at eight years old, and all the collateral damage thereafter. And I was emotionally scarred. I mean, you talking about a basket case? I was two of them, but thanks be to God, I'm not now. And I could not rest because I was filled with so much tension and anxiety. Actually, I didn't use my nasal area, my nose, to actually breathe because the tension was so bad, I kept getting migraine headaches because the pain would shoot through my eyes and burn it back of my head. I was always dizzy. I was always irritated. I was always in pain because of some inherited things, some environmental things, and I could not rest. It was hard to sleep. It was hard to rest. But I had to learn rest. I would be sitting as an adult, as a married, a father, uh, with my wife and my children, and we would all sit around. I'm telling this as a testimony because some of you, um, some of you, but especially fathers, may, might be going through this. I would be sitting down, we'll be just resting, looking at TV. I could not be at rest. I had to be doing something. I had to pick up paper. I had to move around. And they would say, Janice would say, Google, and the kids would say, Daddy, just rest because I had so much nervous energy. Love the Lord, save, ministering, and we all have our shortcomings. But I wasn't able to have peace, real peace, and rest because of what I had to go through. And I had to reshore my foundation. I had to dig my heels in as the king of my heel. I had to stand my ground with my weapon, which is the word of God. And I'm telling you this as a testimony that it might help somebody else, and especially us men, because we have a tendency to hold things in. So I'm telling us, rest. Throughout the day, and especially when you get up in the morning, just breathe. See, we have to breathe out the carbon monoxide and breathe in the oxygen. We have to breathe out the spiritual carbon monoxide and breathe in, breathe in the spiritual oxygen, oxygen to cleanse our physical and our spiritual system. So I'm telling you now, the Word of God is telling you, rest. Be at peace so you can show up your foundation. Job, the first chapter in verses 6 through 12. And it says here, let me turn to Job. And I, and I love Job and I constantly read Job because it encourages me to continue to trust God even through difficult times. So, let me get here. Job, the sixth chapter. This page is so thin, I'm sorry. Okay. And we'll turn to, I said, I'm sorry, Job, the first chapter. Please forgive me. In verses 6 through 12. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, 
a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and that screweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him, about his house, and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put forth not thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. How do you know? How do you know the Lord is not, uh, there's not a conversation between God and you? Job lived a good life. Was he perfect? No. But he had a heart for God. Okay? And so there was a conversation. So the Lord said, don't, no, don't take his life, but go ahead on. See, Job had to, had a solid, he had a solid and secure foundation in God. Job went through some tough things. I mean, of course, he complained some. Then at the end, he put his hand over his mouth. But what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to get to, Job had a solid and secure foundation in God. See, some of the things that you might be going through right now, it is not because you sinned and did wrong. It's because sometimes, many times, God has allowed it to show Satan, you are going, that person is going to serve me regardless. Who knows? Not just me, but who knows? All I've been through personally in my health in the last few years, how do I know or not know that there wasn't a conversation? I mean, overcoming the two-story fall, spent almost 11, well, 11 years and about three months recuperating, then start feeling good, then bam, cancer. But the main thing is, see, I had to have a solid foundation and it didn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. We have to continually study the word of God. We have to continually seek God, pray, continue to do these things. So when the trials come, not if, when the trials come, we can stand our ground. Not with our AK-47, not with a machine gun, whatever the, the ammunition is. Not with TNT, dynamite, whatever, a sword, whatever. But we have to have the word of God to be our foundation. Okay? 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, verses 19 through 20. And the point is, our bodies or temples are not our own. We should look in the mirror sometimes and tell ourselves, I'm not my own. I belong to God. Yes, this flesh is decaying, it's going to rot, it stinks. But guess what? My spirit, I have the spirit of God. Yes, I need this physical temple on the earth. And this temple does belong to God. What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God? Are ye not your own? For ye are brought, bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So whatever we're going through, see, we need to take care of our bodies, our physical bodies, as much as possible. Because with a healthier body, I can serve God better. Even if our bodies are compromising our health, we still must serve God. Okay? But the point is, I don't own this. I don't own Google. I really don't own my boots that I have on. I don't own the clothes that I have on. They actually belong to God. This body belongs to God. This bald head here belongs to God. So therefore, I must take care of this temple spiritually and physically and make sure I'm rooted and grounded in the word of God. 
I want to say this. Don't let anyone knock you off your heel. What I was talking about being the king of the hill, standing your ground. Don't allow yourself, Satan, your daddy, your mama, your bosses, your, your employees, your associate workers, your so associates, community, whatever. Corona, cancer, diabetes. Don't allow any entity to take you off of your mountain. To remove you from your foundation. Don't allow any of these things remove you from your foundation in, in God. Come hell or high water. Be like Job. Hold on to your integrity in the Lord. If someone's trying to tell you or yourself, your flesh is telling you to cheat, to lie, uh, don't do it. Hold on to your godly integrity in the Lord. And guess what? Job, as they say, as they say and have said, he got double for his trouble. See, Job's own wife said, Job, come here, boy. Come here. Now, how long are you going to take this crap? How long are you going to keep trusting that God you're talking about? Look at what he has done to you. He took our children. You know how a mother is about our children. Come on now. But he said, you talk like a foolish woman. Uh-uh. Though he may slay me, I'm going to trust him. In other words, Though he may allow, and he has allowed, and I'm telling us now, though he may slay us, or better put, allow us to go through what we're going through, I will yet praise him. I will not turn my back on God. I will not turn my back on God. I will trust him because my foundation is is in him. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 19 through 21. Standing on a sure foundation, Christ. Standing on a sure foundation, and that foundation is Christ. Okay? Standing on a sure foundation. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. See, God's foundation is sure. No one can take this king off of his heel. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great, great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he should, should be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So in other words, this foundation that we're on is sure. Our foundation is in God. And God knoweth everyone that's his. Now we can, as we would say, fake the funk, we used to say it in the 70s, we can act like we are rooted and grounded. We can be pastors and bishops and choir members, minister of music, lay members, or whatever. We can fake it. We can trick people sometimes. But let me tell you, we can't uh, fool God. And also, God will allow the stress test to come forth. And guess what? Everybody will be able to see that you are faking the funk. Everybody be, be able to see it that you are in for selfish gain. The Bible let us know if you cover your head, it's going to show your feet. You cover your feet, it's going to show your head. So we cannot hide. It'll look like our foundation is secured. But what happens? What happens? We did some renovation uh, two years ago to the outside of the house to 
side it and all of that and put in new windows because we've been here for 31 years. And let me tell you, we knew it was compromised. And that was in the uh, summer we did it. Man, that winter, we could feel the difference in this house. It stayed warmer. Our utility electrical bill went down because what we did, we shored up the foundations, the wall, put, uh, cut out the air that was getting in here and it saved us money. So with the building and with our building, it's the same thing. As time goes on, there's a leak. What's that song? I would sing it, but I might scare you all. There's a leak in this old building. And it's, I got to go. I think it says leaning. I wish I had my wife upstairs right now with me. Because she can sing the old song, but it's about a leak in a building. See, these buildings leak. These buildings kind of sway. These buildings or this body we're in, you get up and try to get up and you realize you're still sitting because it's kind of cranky. It's kind of locked up. But then we got to get out on the floor. We've got to exercise. I mean, last evening, I did my exercises, I did my push-ups, my sit-ups, my stretches, and thank God this old boy can still get out there and still do push-ups, still do the jumping jacks, and still do those things. Not as fast, not as quick, but I still do it because what happens? If I don't exercise, and especially what my body has been through in the last 12 years, I wouldn't be able to walk. Yes, I had the faith that I'm healed, but I had to put some action, some exercise to this building to keep those buildings going. I was trying myself out and I can still put both of my feet together, bend all the way down with both hands and still my hands flat on the floor in front of my tippy toes and I can still do it and count to 30. After that, I gotta come up. It's because I keep practicing that because I know this flesh is decaying, but as long as I'm in this body, I got to keep that building going. So I'm using a natural thing like a parable to let us know in our natural bodies, we got to keep on working on it. Our spiritual bodies, we definitely got to keep working on it. And uh, so that was 2 Timothy 2, 19 through 21. And I was saying about this point, standing on a sure foundation, Christ, which is Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. For other foundation can no man lay than is laid, which is Christ Jesus. There is no other true solid foundation, but that is of Christ. You can try every other foundation. You can try money, exercise, food, family, fame, work, whatever it might be. You can try those things, but the only foundation that is laid and the real true foundation is that which is in Christ. Now, my final verse. Go to Psalms 18 and 2. And this is part of our, our church foundational scripture, really. Okay? It says here, and I, for the point is, he's my rock and fortress. Jesus is. He's my rock and fortress. And it reads, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength. See, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my, fire, of my salvation, and my high tower. So God is my all and all. 
God is my everything. In order for me to pass the stress test, he has to be my foundation. He has to be my all in all. So in my, at this point, I just want to, us to make sure that our foundation, and the question is, is your foundation is secured, which is part two. The results of the stress test, they use so many types of instruments in the building industry. Uh, they use tests for um, tuning a piano, and I saw someone do it years ago. They had this little piece of metal, like a horseshoe almost, a curve, and they did something to it, which I don't understand. But there are stress tests in uh, that part, or a test to tune it. There are stress tests, and when they, um, for automobiles, they put them on the computer, they, uh, when you go to the doctor, and I did that after the uh, back injury, they put me on a machine, and I had to um, do certain things, and it wore me out. They wanted to see how my heart was doing, how my blood pressure, so it was actually called a stress test. So I don't want us to fall out with God, with ourselves and with people when the stress test is on. Just run to the mountain for he is able. Run to the mountain, he is stable. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which may have in earth. Let me tell you all, like you, I would not have been able to stand if today, this year, at this time, if my foundation wasn't secured in the Lord. And I constantly check myself. I even ask the Lord or ask myself, Ghoulie, are you really saved? Ghoulie, are you really trusting the Lord? You say, you ask yourself that, Pastor? You're a pastor. Forget the title. I've got to check me. I've got to check my foundation because how can I leave others if my foundation is not secured? So regardless of your position, take off the title. Take off the robe. Take off the chain. Become naked before the Lord and before yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, am I secured if I'm secured in the Lord? If I'm secured in the Lord, am I really secured in the Lord? Is my foundation secured in the Lord? I will trust, I will trust in him. I will trust in the Lord. I will make sure that my foundation is secure. So on today, check yourself. Look at the man. Look at the woman in the mirror. Look at yourself and make sure you are rooted and grounded in the Lord. And I thank God on today because we all, we all got to make sure that we're rooted and grounded. Because if not, when the test comes, and it will, when the test comes, we are going to know if we are really rooted and grounded. So on today, I want to pray. And this prayer is that we'll be rooted and grounded in the Lord. Forget your position. Forget what church you belong to. Forget who you're related to. Forget all those things. Am I, am I being rooted and grounded in the Lord? Can I pass the stress test? As I said before, and I want us to really go back to Galatians, okay? And I'm going to say this right quick. 
Go back to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Okay? I want to really push this. 22 and 23. But the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is, and I'm going to add this into it. But the fruit of the uh, uh, stress test is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So the next time that you're challenged, someone lie on you, you get a bad, bad health report. Things didn't turn out right. Ask yourself, am I going to pass this stress test? Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are not saved, that they will come to you for you said, come unto me, all you that labor and have it laden, and I will give you rest. Rest for your people in the name of Jesus. That souls will cry out even today through this message. Souls will cry out and yield to you. For those who are saved, but they need that extra power, that turbo power, the Holy Spirit being double power. It's more than speaking in tongues. It's more than shouting. It's more than running around. It's able to close one mouth or able to not speak when you shouldn't. Able to uh, be sensitive and attentive to the Holy Spirit and do thus so. And dear Lord for the backslider that had his hand to the plow, had her hand to the plow because of the stresses because they succumb, succumb to the stresses of this life. They turn away. But I'm praying, dear Lord, for you said you're married to the backslide. In the mighty name of Jesus. And dear Lord, we believe this. Where two or three are coming together in your name, you said you're in the midst. So on today, dear Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. And I expect and believe the souls will save the living set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Please contact us to, through our uh, website. Uh, you can review this message again on Facebook. You can look on YouTube. On the websites, I, uh, there are phone numbers. You can contact us. Please do. But I, um, we'll be waiting for the call. Please call us. Check us out. And I want to say this as I close. I know here in Virginia, the governor set out certain mandates yesterday because people are, are not taking this virus seriously a lot of times. It's real. It's real. We got faith as believers, but God don't want us to be foolish. Timothy, uh, 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 in Timothy... When James has said, if you lack wisdom, ask God for it. He won't withhold it. Let's use our spiritual sense and also use some common sense. But let me tell you this. Coronavirus, COVID-19, Satan has not stopped the gospel. Churches have been limited like other places as far as the capacity level. But the gospel actually has spread even greater. So I don't want us to be uh, disillusioned. I don't want us to be lose hope. I don't want us to lose faith in God. I want us to trust God through this these time, trying times. And this shall pass. But guess what? Even if this, is, this, this does not pass, let's say this virus never ends, my foundation is so secured in the Lord I know I got a better home. So thank you for allowing me to come and us to come before you on today. And please, during this week, enjoy each moment intentionally.
So until the next time, have a great day. Thank you very much.